Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCIE and creator of the CCNA Route Switch Complete video course. And in this video, you're going to learn exactly what's different in Cisco's newly announced CCNA Route Switch version 3 exam. Stay tuned. With the new CCNA, uh, there are still two different paths we can take to get to that CCNA certification. We could take what I call the two-step approach. That's where we take ICND 1 and then we take ICND 2. After passing both of those exams, then we become a CCNA. Interestingly, if we take that route, as soon as we pass the ICND 1 exam, we do have a Cisco certification. It's the CCENT certification. That's their entry-level certification. And then we can take another exam, ICD2, and suddenly we have our CCNA certification. That's the two-step approach. There's also what I call the one and done approach. We take one exam, the CCNA composite exam, and uh, that one exam gets us our CCNA certification. So the question is, which path should we take? My recommendation for that is that if you have less than two years of experience in the real world, I would recommend taking uh, the two-step approach, ICD1 and then ICD2. If you do have two or more years of experience in the industry, yeah, I would personally go for that composite CCNA exam. The exam numbers that you're going to need to know when you register for the exam, you don't want to accidentally register for the old exam while it's still valid and you think you're registering for the new exam. Here are those different exam numbers and the great news is it's really easy to remember the new exam numbers if you knew the old exam numbers. The prior exam numbers, the ones that are soon retiring, ICND-1 has an exam number of 100-101, ICND-2 is 200-101, and the composite CCNA exam for writing and switching, that has an exam number of 200-120. And if you know those numbers, here's why I say it's really easy to memorize the new exam numbers, because it's the exact same numbers except they end in a 5. ICND-1, just replace that last digit with a 5, and that's your exam number, 100-105. ICND-2 is 200-105, and the composite exam is 200-125. But let's say that when Cisco made this announcement, you were already studying for one of the existing exams. Can you still take those existing exams? For a limited time, here are the last dates to test. The last date that you can take the ICND-1 100-101 exam, the retiring ICND-1 exam, the last date is August the 20th of 2016. For ICND-2, let's say you did pass ICND-1 on that very last date of August 20th, 2016, well, you've got a little extra time to pass ICND-2. September the 24th, 2016 is the last test date for that. If you're going to be going after that composite CCNA and writing and switching, though, the 200-120 exam, your last test date is August 20th, 2016. Now, the big question, of course, is what's different? What's the delta between the old exam and the new exam? First, let's consider some of the topics that have been removed. No longer do you need to be able to contrast the operation of bridges and hubs. Bridges have been out of modern networks for quite some time. I think it might have been around 1992, the last time I ever used a bridge in production. Hubs, they've been gone for a while. Hopefully they're gone in your network. The exam also removes some, but not all, of the WAN technologies that it discussed. It removes specifically VSAT, cellular, which was the discussion of 3G and 4G. It removes T1s and E1s. It removes ISDN. DSL has been removed and frame relay has been removed. This is something that had been hotly debated when the previous version of the CCNA exam came out. People were wondering at that time, about three years ago, why is frame relay still on the exam? Finally, it is off the exam. Also off of the exam, a couple of first hop redundancy protocols. The exam blueprint still does have you know about HSRP, hot standby router protocol, but it removes the other two first hop redundancy protocols. It removes VRRP and it removes GLBP. Also gone, interesting, is troubleshooting layer one issues where we're looking at giants and runts and all those sorts of layer one issues that we might have on an interface. We mentioned frame relay is gone. Also gone is the section, of course, for troubleshooting frame relay. We no longer need to be able to monitor net flow information. Those are some of the main topics that have been removed from the exam. Now let's consider what's been added. Several new topics added to the exam. Really excited about some of these. Cloud resources. That's going to be an exciting topic. Cisco has been very focused on cloud services as of late. There's now a CCNA cloud certification that you can get. But this is going to introduce us into cloud services, how we use resources that are not at our site. They're not on our premises. 
We're using virtualized services out in the cloud somewhere. Also added to this exam blueprint is LLDP. Think of that as much like an industry standard variant of CDP where we can learn information about layer two adjacent neighbors. Also added is VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol, where we can have switches interconnected and create a VLAN on one switch, and that VLAN creation gets advertised over a trunk to a neighboring switch, and that advertisement can continue to propagate throughout the switch network if we want. We also need to be able to configure multi-area OSPF for both OSPF version 2 and OSPF version 3. Now, the prior version of the exam wanted us to know about multi-area OSPF, but we were not required to do configuration. We needed to know about it in theory, but now we have to be able to configure it. Also, the previous version of the CCNA blueprint required us to be able to configure EIGRP for IP version 4. Now, in addition to that, we need to be able to configure EIGRP for IP version 6. And speaking of routing protocols, there is a new routing protocol added to this blueprint. It's RIP version 2, the routing information protocol. And this might come as a surprise to some people because RIP is not considered very advanced. It doesn't have fast convergence times, but it is really easy to understand. I think it's a great way to get our feet wet in the waters of routing protocols. Now, by the way, it's RIP version 2. That only supports IP version 4. There's no mention of RIP NG. RIP Next Generation, which can support IP version 6, you get into RIP NG in your CCMP writing and switching track. Also added is MLPPP. That's the multi-link point-to-point protocol variant. We needed to know about a point-to-point protocol in the previous version, but now we need to be able to set up multi-link PPP. This is where we can take multiple physical interfaces on a router. Maybe we have a couple of serial interfaces. And with MLPPP, we can logically bond those together so that those combined interfaces logically look like a single interface. And the router software can treat that bundle of interfaces as one physical interface. That's going to give us more throughput and it's going to give us more redundancy as well. Also, the prior version of the blueprint required that we know about basic VPN theory. Well, specifically, we need to know about DM VPNs in this blueprint, dynamic multipoint VPNs. This is where we can have a VPN connection, a virtual private network connection brought up on demand between a couple of our sites. And I mentioned earlier that RIP version 2 was added to the blueprint. Well, probably the most surprising addition to the blueprint for me was this one, eBGP. This is where we're using the border gateway protocol to peer with a neighbor in a different autonomous system. And BGP is normally considered to be a very advanced routing protocol. Certainly, there is a lot to know about BGP. You can get into BGP peer groups and route reflectors and confederations. There's a lot to know about BGP. And you get into more of that in your CCMP writing and switching studies, and even more into that in your CCIE writing and switching studies. But BGP is commonly used when we're connecting out to multiple service providers. I think it's good that we're at least made aware of BGP at this level and know how to do a really basic configuration. Cisco tells us we don't have to do anything advanced with BGP. We're not doing any sort of filtering or anything like that. Just setting up a basic connection with our neighbor and advertising a network to that neighbor. Another addition to the blueprint, and honestly, it's my favorite topic in all of Cisco, it's QoS, it's quality of service. How can we recognize traffic or classify traffic, as we say, then mark that traffic, alter bits inside of the packet, so it can be recognized by a next top switch or a next top router as being of a certain level of priority and treat it accordingly. Maybe we want to treat voice traffic better than network gaming traffic. Maybe we want to trust a marking coming in from a Cisco IP phone, but we don't want to trust a marking coming in from some PC that somebody just plugged into a wall jack in the visitor's area. And the blueprint mentions several specific QoS topics. We're also going to get into things like policing and shaping. These are a couple of different ways that we can set a speed limit on certain traffic types. We don't want Netflix traffic, for example, to take up more than a certain amount of bandwidth. Another new topic is 802.1x. This is a security topic. This is where we can force somebody to authenticate themselves before they connect to either a wired network, or we could also use this with a wireless network. Another security feature that's been added is a DHCP snooping. Now, this is going to prevent somebody from adding a rogue DHCP server to our network and handing out incorrect IP address information, such as here's the default gateway that you should use. And that causes PCs to send their packets to a default gateway, which is really the attacker's PC. They might have 
influenced PCs on a network to do that by setting up a rogue DHCP server. This is going to help prevent that. Also, in the prior version of the Blueprint, we had to set up IP version 4 based access control lists. Well, that's been expanded. Now we need to know how to set up IP version 6 access control lists. And speaking of these ACLs, a way to monitor that is to use the APICEM path trace ACL analysis tool. Wow, that's a mouthful. APIC hyphen EM, that's Application Policy Infrastructure Controller Enterprise Module. Another topic that's been brought down from the CCMP routing and switching track, as many of these topics have, is ICMP echo based IP SLA. This is where we can send a ping out into the network. We're pinging some target IP address. And based on whether or not we can reach that IP address, that affects what's called a tracking object. That tracking object can be either up or down, and that can mean that we're either going to use or not use a static route that we've configured. We're also going to talk about SPAN, Switch Port Analyzer. This is where we can connect a network sniffer to a catalyst switch port and monitor traffic that's appearing on another port on that switch or a VLAN on that switch. That's going to help us do some troubleshooting by analyzing those packets. Normally when you connect a packet sniffer into a switch, you don't see unicast traffic that's going to a device off of another port because the switch is only sending it out the appropriate port. But with SPAN we can say, hey, give me a copy of that. I need to analyze that. And something else, and this was really the talk of Cisco Live last year, is network programmability. There was a lot of talk about SDN, Software Defined Networking. Well, we're going to get an introduction to that in this version of the CCNA. So we've got some exciting topics coming up, and all of these topics, of course, are going to be covered in my upcoming CCNA Routing and Switching Complete video course. Production is already underway. I get a lot of questions on social media asking, hey, Kevin, when's this going to be out? Well, at the time of this recording, Cisco Press hasn't announced a publication date, but I think it's going to be sometime in this fall, the fall of 2016. But I am feverishly working on it. I started working on it the day Cisco came out with their announcement, and I honestly think it's going to be the best product I've ever made. And if you want to keep up to date about the progress of this CCNA Route Switch Complete video course and be notified when it comes out, I've got a link down in the description of this video. You can click on that link and enter your email address. And I'll send you some periodic updates about how things are coming along, and I'll let you know when the course is available. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and click the like button. And if you don't want to miss any of my other YouTube videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.